Hi, I'm John from Autel here, and today I'm excited to share with all of our do-it-yourselfers and even professional technicians that are maybe looking for an alternative choice for your, your full-fledged diagnostic scan tool. Autel has released a, something that we call an AP2500 scan tool, which is basically a little VCI module. I already have it plugged in into the vehicle behind me here. And it will come with the VCI module and it'll also come with a little owner's manual. And you know, it's very simple to set up. You, you pair it to your phone or a tablet device. So on the very first screen, as you just follow the directions, there's gonna be a little QR code. You can scan the QR code with the camera on your phone and it will automatically download the app for you. So once the Maxi app is downloaded to your phone, you'll have to go ahead and register the tool just like you would with any piece of Autel equipment. So if you already happen to have an Autel account, you could use your same username and password or you could create a whole new one if you wanted to. And then it's going to ask you what type of car you want this to be paired to. Now there's an advantage to that because it's more than just a regular generic codes and data type of reader that's on the market as you'll see as we show you this live, but you can pair it to one brand of car. So I paired it to General Motors brand, which means I will get pretty much the same level of diagnostics that I can with some of the more powerful types of scan tools on the market for any type of General Motors vehicle out there. So I've got to pair it to GM, which is the type of car that we have behind us here. It comes up at auto, auto IDs, just like it always did before. It comes up that it's a 2019 Buick Encore, which is exactly what we have here. Now, the key's not in the on position, so I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna start the vehicle up so we can actually look at live data here. I'm gonna show you some of the powerful features that you can get for a relatively low price. Now, just like any other type of scan tool, I can go in and scan all the modules. Now, we just finished up shooting quite a, quite a few different technical training videos. So I'm assuming this vehicle behind me is riddled with all kinds of trouble codes from what we've done with these other, with these other videos that we did prior to shooting this one. So I could scan them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say scan now. Um, I can do a custom scan or I can do, I could do a basic scan or I can do a custom scan or a full scan. Now again, if I pair, once you pair this to a specific type of vehicle, it allows you to take it to the next level and get more of the in-depth types of scanning here. For right now, I'm just gonna scan the basic section here. So it's gonna pull up and try to talk to the different protocols through the OBD2 connector. It found a CAN protocol. Um, I can go ahead and punch in a mileage. Now, I already did this off camera. It's about 37,000 miles on here because the benefit to doing this is it's gonna give me a, a more professional looking report afterwards. So I'm gonna say, yeah, the 37,000 miles was just fine. Um, I do have a P0125 current trouble code, which is insufficient coolant temperature for closed loop fuel control. We're just gonna say okay here. But again, remember, we were doing a bunch of different videos on this earlier. So I'm not concerned about any of these trouble codes. I have an ignition coil A primary circuit. I have ignition coil B, C, D, and then I also have open circuits again for pending codes for these, random misfire pending codes. And again, none of these codes, there's really nothing wrong with this vehicle. These we just set on prior videos here. So I have the ability to erase all the codes in this section, much like we do with our more powerful scan tools. Again, it's not something you'd normally want to do because you'd want to wait till you actually diagnosed and repaired the vehicle properly before you eliminate any trace of the trouble codes out there. So I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I can go into the service and I also have TSBs and recalls. So I can also go ahead and our tool has the ability to allow you to find a local auto repair shop, a certified auto repair shop. So if this, if you happen to be a do-it-yourselfer and you say, hey, whatever codes I have, you know, it's a little bit, I'm in over my head at this point and I want to find an auto repair shop in close proximity to me that I could take it to a professional. I can hit that button and it'll pull up a list of 
local auto repair shops that are certified to be able to help you out here in the future. But I'm gonna to go to the TSBs and recalls. I have no recalls at the top of the screen, it says zero. TSBs, however, there's a total of 41. So I'm getting some factory related information, again, all included in with the price that you paid for this tool. And it's a very affordable tool for not only the do-it-yourselfer, but for a professional tech that maybe wants a secondary tool so they don't have to you know, pull the one diagnostic tool away from you know, whatever's going on in the shop at the time. And again, it's, it's laid out just like how the manufacturers lay them out. So there's 41 total TSBs for this technical service bulletins for this particular vehicle. They group them, manufacturer groups them by you know, powertrain management systems, engine forced induction system, engine lubrication systems, exhaust systems, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna read the whole list of how we have the different areas for the TSBs being displayed. I'm gonna hit the back button. I could have picked on any one of them and it gave me those, those common type of faults that the manufacturer is aware of and they turn it into a technical service bulletin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to, I'm gonna go back one more screen here. It says, am I sure I wanna exit? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna go back to the main menu screen and I have a six different buttons come up on the screen here on this particular 2019. Now, if I was working on a plug-in hybrid or a hybrid vehicle, I may actually add one or two extra buttons on here, but I'm gonna go through freeze frame data. This is all parts of, of uh, OBD2, right? So I, if any one of those trouble codes, the highest number priority trouble code that that actually stored, I'm going to have recorded or snapshot data of what was going on, how the vehicle was being driven when it was stored. At this point though, it's all gonna say it was done at idle because those all came from a video here. But I'm gonna go into live data and I'm gonna say this function displays live data related to emissions, I'm okay. It's giving me a little heads up as to what I just pushed there. It's gonna load the data and it's gonna default the data down to me into the regular digital format. So pretty extensive data for the engine controller and also for engine number two. Now there's not two engines on this car. This is a General Motors thing, how it breaks up the data. So even though it's all coming from the ECM, I'm not looking at all the data the ECM has to give me all at one time because that's gonna affect the refresh rate of the tool. So I'm seeing just engine one and engine two data, which is coming from General Motors at this point. So everything from the temperature sensors, the O2 sensors, you know, whatever types of data you're accustomed to seeing, if you're a professional, you know, you know what I'm talking about here. I'm gonna scroll on up here and I'm gonna try to find something that looks like it's gonna give us some good data here. So here's a catalyst temperature, bank one, sensor one, um, barometric pressures, the distance traveled since the last time the trouble codes were cleared, evaporative purge, engine fuel level, time since engine was started, short-term, long-term fuel trims. So I'm gonna go up to the top here and I got live data, I've got a graph. So if I go to the graph mode, you'll notice I have the same type of displays being displayed across the screen and I can select the different patterns that I wanna see and turn it into an actual gauge as opposed to digital numbers. I'm gonna go back one here and I want to now go to the actual gear at the top of the screen. And here's where I can kind of zero in on a particular area of the data stream that I'm after. So I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna to try to find that oxygen sensor again from my list. Notice I also have an abil ability where unlike some of the other scan tool features that are out on the market, if I didn't know where the particular scan or O2 sensor was that I was trying to test, I have an ability to pull up. This is more information related how General Motors or Ford or Chrysler or whoever would actually display this. The layout of which oxygen sensor was what here. Oxygen sensor output, voltage, bank one, sensor one. Now when I select it this way, I have the ability to pull up a screen that says, hey, how do I wanna look at it? Do I wanna look at an actual numeric value which we're accustomed to seeing? 
I also have the ability to pull up the actual gauge, but I want to go ahead and look at an actual graph here. And again, I can change the color of the graph. I can do whatever I wanted to do, just like a lot of the scan tools out on the market allow you to do normally anyways. But I'm going to say, okay, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with the graph. Now, one of the things I kind of wanted to point out so you could kind of see the benefit of using a tool like this is I have the ability to look at, you know, the overall current since I'm, I'm pumping currents for um, air fuel ratio sensors or I can look at voltage of the O2 sensor itself. So I have the ability to select between the two. And then I also have the ability to set the ranges. So setting the ranges, as you're well aware, with your professional scan tools, a lot of the aftermarket scan tools don't give you this type of scenario. So if you know by being able to pull up the data from the different types of vehicles and the different parameters, the PIDs as we like to call them, if you know what it takes to set a code, the normal operating range, and if it goes outside of that range, it's going to store a diagnostic trouble code, this tool allows me to set those ranges. So that's a very nice, powerful diagnostic feature. Because at this point, if it's an intermittent type of problem, I can set it so once I look at my factory information system to say, anytime it went outside of this range, it's gonna store a code. Well, now it's going to trigger that code being stored once it exceeded that operating range. Whether it's on the minimum side or maximum side, doesn't much matter here. So it's a very powerful tool and again, as you, when you purchase this tool, you have the ability to go ahead and marry it to one type of car line. Now, if you did not marry it to one type of car line, it would be a generic type of OBD2 scan tool. Um, you'd lose out on some of the features, but for the dollar amount that your distributor is gonna sell this to you for, it's a great, especially if you work on a bunch of fleets at your vehicle, at your place of employment, or if you're, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, and you just want a good overall, very powerful scan tool for the type of vehicle that you personally own, this is a great tool to be able to do this. So we can see that we're you know, graphing the O2 sensor like we set it up for me before as soon as I exited out of that screen. So I, I could accelerate the car, all of this stuff's gonna change just like a traditional tool. So if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you could go down to your local auto parts store and buy you know, a regular generic type of scan tool, but it's not gonna be packed full of all the features of some of the more professional type of scan tools out there for about the same dollar amount that you spent for the, the generic type of tool. And again, you can marry it to one car line, and that means if I married it to General Motors like I did on this particular car, any GM, so Buick, Chevy, you know, GMC, it doesn't matter what the, what the type of car line happens to be, as long as it's General Motors, it's going to be able to pull up and be able to do the same type of um, more advanced diagnostic testing that a professional scan tool would do. And again, it's a very affordable price. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in looking into, contact your local distributor and set up a demo with them and ask them more information about the AP2500 scan tool. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.